the way I wanted to phrase this talk really was lung cancer facts, just things that you need to know. And that's going to be kind of an all comers um, in the United States. But then also I'm going to try to tailor it towards what I think is important for our, our Asian American population. And then specifically, we're going to talk about lung cancer screening. And when I, when I discuss lung cancer screening, I want you to remember lung cancer screening is a, is a covered screening test, but there is a certain um, subset of people that that's for, and that does include some type of smoking history. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then we're going to go into some of the disparities that I see with Asians in our population and lung cancer. And then lastly, we're going to finish with what I call a hidden disparity, where we're going to talk about lung cancer in Asian American women who do not smoke. When we look at the most common cancer, lung cancer is not overall the most common, but it's the number two most common cancer, right? So for men, it's always prostate, women, it's always breast, but lung cancer is still both in men and women, it's the second most common. But the part that you really have to remember is the number one cancer killer is lung cancer, both in men and women. It's 25% five-year survival for all stages. Now, this is somewhat debated um, depending on what studies you look at, but overall, we look at the prognosis when we could compare survival with Asians versus Caucasians, uh, Hispanic, uh, Black, and there's differences, but in a majority of studies, including a study that I may show you that we could talk about offline that I'm looking at right now, Asians usually have a favorable prognostic factor independent of smoking status. And we'll get into some of the reasons why that is So, uh, with the Asian population. Before we get into it, right, we still need to how do I, I like to show this slide because how do we relate lung cancer as it relates to just everything else in the world? And how do we dispel some of these myths and stigmas with smoking and non-smoking and all that, right? Well, let's just start it off that still to this day, more people die of lung cancer than, than breast cancer, colon cancer, and prostate combined in the United States. And like I said, the overall five-year survival for lung is 25%. But when you look at that compared to breast, 91%, prostate cancer, 97%, colon cancer, 64%. You can see we're at a clear disadvantage for lung cancer, okay? And that lung cancer is not always related to smoking. And even if it is related to smoking, right? That's okay. We know that. We know that's the number one risk factor, but that's okay to talk about. And that doesn't mean you deserve lung cancer or that we shouldn't talk about it. And that more than, if I told you that more than 50% of all lung cancers right now diagnosed in the United States are people who have a very light smoking history, quit years ago, 20, 30, 40 years ago, or who do not smoke at all, would you be surprised at that? And I think that's to tell you that there's more than meets the eye. It's not all about just smoking. There's more things that we need to learn about lung cancer. And hopefully we can relate that today. All race or ethnicity, male, female are usually diagnosed late stage at stage four disease, where your, your expected survival is 7% at five years. And only a quarter of patients are diagnosed real early stage where you can have, where there's more treatment options available, better treatment options, a better survival, right? If you catch it earlier, you're going to have a better survival. We know that. So the question that comes up, right? Well, why are we catching it so late and how do we catch it earlier? Do we have a test that can help that, that can prevent you from catching it late? And the answer to that is yes. And what is that, right? So it's lung cancer screening. And so how do we change that? And so if I were to tell you that lung cancer screening actually stemmed and started in 2013, right? Back in 2013, that was all based off of what we call the National Lung Cancer Screening Trial, the NLST. That was a major landmark trial showing a 20% reduction in lung cancer mortality if you got an annual CT scan, low-dose CT scan, which is lung cancer screening, which we'll go over, versus a chest X-ray. And they follow those patients for three years. You caught it earlier and you treat it better and you have a less death. Okay. So bottom line is a low dose CT scan can save lives for lung cancer. And that will, the idea is to catch it earlier. You're supposed to get it annually, right? So the idea is not just one and done. You're supposed to get follow-up. All right. So for you out there that may not know this, what is the lung cancer screening scan? It's a low dose CT scan. It takes five to 10 minutes. They do not do any IV contrast, no oral contrast. You can see that's the machine. You just go in. It doesn't hurt. You're supposed to get it annually, right? So the idea is not just one and done. You're supposed to get follow-up. We know from multiple studies that lung cancer screening and from the Nelson and the NLSC trial that lung cancer screening follow-up is really important. 60% of the cancers were not caught on the initial CT scan. They were caught on the subsequent CT scans following. So it's like a lung, it's like a lung health check. It's like when you get your history and physical, 
you get your CT scan every year, right? So you have to get it every year. And that's important. A lot of people don't realize that. Well, you may ask, we're in California, right? And so, and this is a Stanford Care Talk. So let's talk about California, right? Because it's really important to talk about California because we're not always in the conversation when it comes to this. Look how we're doing with lung cancer screening in California. We are the worst state as of this year. The American Lung Association came out their recent data. We're 0.7%. We screen the least amount of people that are eligible in the country. Remember, we told you that 60% of cancers are picked up on the subsequent CT scans, not necessarily initially. So what's the follow-up? If you got a lung cancer screening CT scan, all comers, it's 40%. Not that great, right? And then you can see here, if you see my pointer here, year two, year three in the red, in the red arrows, it drops significantly to less than 5% of patients are actually getting their follow-up CT scans. Okay, so that's a problem. We do know that centralized programs are better, meaning a coordinator, a lay, work, a lay navigator, nurse navigator, somebody that can help you get into the system, get you through all that does help with follow-up, okay? But this is where I want you to focus on, right? Our Asian American population, and this is in the Bay Area, this may be you on the call or in, on this talk, our Asian Americans had the worst adherence out of any race, ethnicity, white, black, Hispanic, they, we had the worst. And uh, looking into that a little further, it was a lot due to cultural and language barriers. But if we're not following up, if our Asian Americans aren't following up with lung cancer screening CT scans, we're not going to get the same benefit that they did, as you can see here in the NLST and the, and the Nelson trial. Their adherence rate, because it was a clinical trial closely followed by clinical nurses, they had more than 95, 90 to 95 percent of patients following up every year. Right. That's how you need to get the benefit. So we know that not only getting the CT scan is important, but doing the follow up afterwards. OK. And that our Asian Americans, we have something to work on. So when you increase lung cancer screening, they showed that you increase the amount of stage one lung cancers, average annual percent change of eight percent. So you increase stage one and then you decrease. That's the minus six there. You decrease by six percent per year, the stage four diagnosis. So you're having a stage migration. You're catching more people earlier where you can do better treatments, right? But look, this study by Alex Potter and Jeff Yang, who was a you know, Stanford fellow here, is now at MGH, done a lot of great work with uh, lung cancer screening. They looked at this and they presented this um, and eventually published this in uh, BMJ. Do Asian Americans, do we, does it work for us? Okay. Are we getting diagnosed more with stage one because of lung cancer screening? Well, it worked very nicely for Caucasian Americans, they, they, now, they went from being diagnosed with more with stage four to now being diagnosed with more stage one here in purple. However, it didn't affect our Asian Americans. And there's reasons for that. One of that, that we're not qualified for lung cancer screening or we're not even getting lung cancer screening. And so we still are more predominantly diagnosed with stage four disease than stage one, even with even in the lung cancer screening era. That's a little negative, but what about another good that's going on for our Asian Americans? Yes. To put it bluntly, which I'll show some data on, Asian Americans are more diagnosed, uh, smoking or non-smoking, regardless, more with stage four lung cancer, okay? But to this day and age, uh, every year, every month, there are better treatments out, even for later stage disease. So it is not, quote unquote, a death sentence. You're, the survival is not six months anymore for stage four lung cancer. There are many options available. All right. So kind of the call to action, right? I've showed you that lung cancer screening saves lives, but I've also showed you Asians have the worst lung cancer screening follow-up and initiation, which I don't have data here for that, but that's kind of what we're seeing preliminarily. Plus, they're more likely to be diagnosed with stage four, right? So how do we combat all that? Well, this is what we think is gonna help. We think to combat this, you need active outreach. We need to attack you all. We need to go out there and find you and get you through the process because you may not be understand things or we'll have to talk to your kids. So we use what's called a lay navigator system to help to help you get through the process of shared decision making, of smoking cessation, of getting the CT scan, and we do that. Um, we're trying to do that culturally sensitive, right? It, it helps when we can when we can speak the language. We also we have translators as well. But the idea is is that we're trying to improve lung cancer screening uptake and adherence by employing navigators, calling you on the phone, helping you through the process. The other way we increase lung cancer screening in our Asian American community is we go to the population that we think is highest risk. The highest risk right now is Chinese American men in the Bay Area currently with limited English proficiency, meaning English is their second language. They have the highest risk right now of lung cancer and uh, based on their smoking history. 
And we also know what regions smoke more than others or have a smoking history and have more Asian population. And we go after that. So we specifically go after that region versus, right? It's no, it doesn't make sense to go after a region where there may be not many Asians or the Asians don't smoke in that region, right? We should go after the highest risk first. Otherwise, it's just not going to be feasible. All right, let's go to phase three. What do I mean by Asian American disparities in cancer? Okay, so let's talk about us as Asian Americans. We are the fastest growing U.S. racial group. We're right now at 24 million. We will be the we are the fastest growing group more than any other racial group. Cancer, if I can't, I have to stress this enough. Cancer is the leading cause of Asian American men and women in the United States. It's not heart disease like it is in Caucasians, Latin, every other racial ethnic group, men and women. Heart disease is the leading cause of death. It's not to say that heart disease is important, but in Asians, it's cancer that kills us. And, you know, Moon Chen, Scarlett Link Gomez, a bunch of people, and then who I, Susan Shinagawa, who I don't know yet, who I'd love to meet, but I know she's probably been on your care talks before. She's a breast cancer survivor, activist talked about this in this publication. And I think her quote says it all, right? Our, our problems, meaning Asian American problems, never make the headlines. So this, they, they, these, 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 these authors came up with prejudices, racism, cultural language barriers, and what I call, well, not me, but what we call the model minority myth, where a lot of people don't pay attention to Asians and cancer because they think that we are all are wealthy and drive Teslas and are all scientists, we're all doctors, right? We know that as Asian Americans on this call or on this talk, we're not, it's a very big, diverse, um, we're a very big, diverse group. But look at, but does the NIH believe that, right? So if you look at the total NIH budgets, budget, right? National Institutes of Health for Asian American research, it's only 0.17% for Asian Americans. And out of all the clinical trials that are done, 2% are Asian Americans. So how, how can we relate to that? How can we further advance the field if there's none of our patients or none of our people are in the clinical trials? It's going to be not just California or New York, you know, or Seattle, right? Or in Washington, it's going to be all over. So we have to pay attention um, as an ethnic group. And then what about the diversity, right? Just look, if you look at all the disaggregated Asian groups, whether we're a naturalized citizen, not a citizen, U.S. born, there's a huge mix. We have the biggest dichotomy, the biggest spread of income over median household income for all different Asian ethnicities. So we are not all the same. We have very different um, subgroups, all sorts of things complicating us. Even more reason why you have to study our group a little bit more, do research. We got to figure out what's going on, right? So let's put it into perspective. Lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer mortality among Asian Americans. Cancer is the number one cause of death of Asian Americans. And then when we look at the racial distribution with how lung cancer looks for the American Lung Association for Asians, Asians, we are 16% less likely to be diagnosed earlier, which I kind of showed you earlier, right, from other studies. We're more likely to be diagnosed at a later stage. The highest incidence of lung cancer in Asian Americans is on the West Coast. This is where we are. We have to start it from ground grassroots up, right? It's not going to be everybody across the country going to be looking at this. The survival was also shown to be the highest with Asians. So not only are we diagnosed later, we may also have a good survival. So I look at that as a positive, right? Even though we're diagnosed later, there's something different in the biology. Um, and that's debated. Part four. So stay with me, guys. Um, let's talk about part four. I want to switch gears to what I call the hidden disparity. So now we're going to switch gears to Asian American women who do not smoke. We looked at over the last 10 years, all Kaiser Northern California patients with lung cancer. I bet you'd be surprised if I told you that the majority are women. There's more women with lung cancer, all race and ethnicity than men over the last 10 years. And what about if I told you 15 and a half percent of all the patients with lung cancer had never smoked or are non-smokers or do not smoke. And out of those non-smokers, 72% of them are women. And then if I took white versus black versus Latin versus Asian, it's not to compare, but it's to show that Asians have the, are the number two right behind non-Hispanic white in lung cancer prevalence overall, at least in, in, in our Kaiser Northern California population. So highly prevalent, right? This is something that's out there that we have to know. Asian women non-smokers with lung cancer are increasing 2% per year. And this is in our population right now. And that's significant. No other group is increasing except this group. You know, Scarlett Lynn Gomez's group in Mindy Daruan looked at this. They looked at Sutter Health and they also looked at high, uh, Hawaii data. And they too showed increased incidence, and they were able to disaggregate the data, meaning showing Chinese, Filipino, Korean, all were higher incidence of lung cancer versus Black and non-Hispanic white. 
But this is what's really interesting, right? Japanese American did not have, so you can see different Asian groups are different in terms of even lung cancer incidents. So more, more things that we have to study. But bottom line, lung cancer incidence is, is high in the Asian population, regardless um, of, it's not just at Kaiser, it's other places too. And so to answer some of your questions that you guys already asked was, well, what are the causes of that? Well, we know that biomarkers, meaning mutations in the tumor cells of Asian women who do not smoke are different. And usually that's caused by what's called EGFR, epidermal growth factor receptor. What we're going to talk about in a second is, well, what causes the EGFR to change? Um, there's a lot of different inciting factors, and that's what we're trying to figure out. But bottom line is when you look at these multiple studies, non-smokers, so patients that don't smoke, EGFR Asian, you're more, you have a 60% chance of having an EGFR mutation, which is what caused, quote, unquote, the mutation in your lung, lung cells to turn into cancer. Okay. And how do we treat that? There's different medications we have for that. But even in smoking, even if you have a smoking history, Asians had a three fold higher incidence of or prevalence of having EGFR receptor mutations. So you can't just say non smokers, female. It's Asians in general tend to have different types of biomarkers. So the biology is different and there's different treatments for that. There's different prognosis for that, depending on what treatment you get. And so it's important to test our patients to get these. And so that brings us to the next question, which is the UCSF Female Asian Never Smoker Study that I'm lucky enough to be a part of. So is Stanford here, UC Davis. Um, and essentially, these are our four groups are looking at this. We're trying to see what are the causes of, you know, what's causing EGFR or whether you're EGFR or not, what are some of the factors inciting why women that don't smoke get lung cancer? So what it is, it's a 20 to 30 minute survey. We can send it any language. We can send it online, send it to your kids. We can send it paper, fill out things cooking status. Did you have an exposure to this? Where are you from in Asia? Okay. And then you get a saliva sample. You spit into a cup and then you can mail back into us, right? And that's how we're going to figure out, right? We're going to figure out what are the causes? Is it multifactorial, which it most likely is, but what are some more significant causes than others? What affects Asian versus South Asian versus Filipino, right? So what are the take-home points that I think are relevant to this group? Remember, cancer is the number one cause of death in our population, Asian Americans. Our family members, our friends are getting affected by cancer. How are we going to stop that? Through research, through extra funding, however you want to look at it, through, through awareness. Lung cancer, out of all the cancers, is the number one cancer killer in our population in Asian Americans. So how can we save our Asians? How can we save our family members? Get them into lung cancer screening if they qualify. Get them in now. It's covered. There's no excuse. Medi-Cal, Medicare, Medicaid, California has passed all the laws that will cover your, your, your $3,000 CT scan. At the most, you pay 20 bucks, okay? So if we tell our, our family and friends that aren't on this call to get lung cancer screening, we could save their lives. That's how we could prevent stage four and get to stage one where you can get better treatment. What about our lung cancer in women that don't smoke? Well, we know that there's no lung cancer screening CT scan right now for you right now, correct? Right? So you have to be proactive about your health. The majority of times we often see symptoms. And if you're having a symptom, don't wait six months. Don't wait three months. Wait a month. Fine. Get your Zyrtec. Get your allergy pill. If it's not getting better in a week, come back to your primary care doctor and get an imaging study. We can catch it early enough, but you got to be proactive. You got to be aware that that's a risk if you're in that demographic. Okay. What else can we do? The famous call to action, lung cancer in Asian Americans. Well, we do talks like this, community health. But public awareness, right? We go to Street Fest. This is us at Street Fest. We go to community health seminars with Dr. Louis' team, right? Let your family and friends know about this. Not only lung cancer screening, if you have a smoking history, so specifically in our men, um, we see a high prevalence in our Asian men, get them in to get a lung cancer screening. And the fan study, right? Sign them up right now. You can be a control. You don't even have to have lung cancer. Sign you up so we can figure out why you're getting lung cancer and then we figure out how to treat you. So with that, I thank all of you. This is, this, you know, it's, it's, it's a team. It takes a village. And so it's my team that's amazing. So thank you to the care team.